Hey guys, cool blonde way back. I'm Rick. I'm Calvin. We're back with Dexter. Mm -hmm. Last time on Dexter, there was quite the revelation, quite the twist, quite the M. Night Shyamalan debauchery. Yes. I like what you did there with revelation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Seeing as these are the, the doomsday killers and whatnot. It was Travis all along, Austin. Yeah. Him acting on his own, killing Geller, killing his own sister, presumably, yeah. and now hunting Dexter in the church that is within Wi-Fi range. Yeah. So that automatically makes it like ten times better of a place to stay. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I would stay there over a five-star hotel that did not have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a good thing that he actually went to the church to update his blog, blog. rather than at the hotel. Because <laughs> yeah. then it actually led back Or, or at the there. sister's house. Yeah. <laughs> that would be real bad. <laughs> yeah. No, he's not... He might be crazy, but he's not dumb. See, that, I feel like, is... He's actually making a switch. Like, he his personality switches. So that... Because yeah, for I, convenience I mean, and stuff, if he were staying in the hotel room, then he would have done it there, probably. Yeah, and he seemed, like, very rattled when... Dexter had him in the car or whatever. Yeah. You know, like, he didn't seem like he was acting. No. He was also seemed extremely rattled when he woke up and the hand was in the sink and the writing was on the wall. Yeah. But, again, he didn't tell Dexter everything about that either. No. So, was he his different personality then? Is the whole thing just an act? I don't know. The woman did hear two different voices. That is true. But... I don't know, maybe this is a more recent thing. I mean, it couldn't possibly have been Geller that knocked him out. Because if, if he fought back and Dexter was still getting the kill room ready, he wouldn't have frozen that quickly. Right. And, like, if he wasn't switching, why would he even let the one woman go? Yeah. Kind of thing. So, yeah. Crazy stuff. I'm intrigued to see where things go. And also, uh, Mr. Green, not from Clue... But the computer expert yes. has a suspicious hand. <laughs> it's highly suspicious. That's that's evidence that it's evidence and it's creepy. Is the property of Miami Metro homicide. So let's see where that goes. Yeah. <sighs> I'm just so glad that Harry was there. <laughs> yeah, Harry is really the MVP. MVP in the show. But I am concerned that Travis has seen Dexter's face. Yeah. So that's a little concerning. But he's also crazy. He is also crazy. So, you know, who knows what all he's going spouting off. I mean, he's, I assume when the cops catch him, he's going to be talking about, like, Geller still being alive and all these things. Although Dexter's keeping him alive. So I guess that's not quite as impossible and crazy yeah. as it seems. And, like, once, if he does get caught and gets sentenced to like a mental institution or something, starts taking pills, become, becomes more lucid. Like, does that become a problem? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it does. Or does Dexter break in and kill him? Because <laughs> that way, Dad gets the arrest and Dexter gets... The kill. The kill. It's a possibility. Unless he could work it out some way to where it appears to be an act of God. In the asylum? Or you mean... In police custody. Mm -hmm. But, like, a lightning strike. <laughs> knocks a tree over. Crushes the car that he's in. Something like that. Yeah. You know. Or, I mean, if he died with his own poison gas or something and the police just found him. Like, that's still case closed, right? Yeah. I mean, I, it's not quite as good for Deb as if she brings him in. Yeah. And stops him. But, yeah, so I guess their plan is to bomb... Poison gas bomb the police department. Yeah. I wonder if any of this comes back to Green in any way. Like, what's his deal? I don't know. The only thing I can figure is, like, maybe through his, like, intense research of the structure of the building. Like, he knows, like, oh, there's, like, a, a poison gas suppression system or, like, an emergency ventilation system that he can just do while everyone else is inhibited in some way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, like, 
you know, playing as Jack the Ripper, like, that's old enough that maybe, like, it's still tasteless. Yeah. But, you know, Hitman, you're, you're killing people. But, like, not real people. Yeah, not real people, not real events, and certainly the Bay Harbor Butcher is way too recent. Yeah. For anything like that. And Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, like, he's, he's got a couple screws loose. Like, he, he has an obsession, and it's probably the most recent of many obsessions, but, yeah, this one's a little darker and, and poor taste. Is he doing any field research? <laughs> like, I wonder how far he's going with, well, with making this game. I don't think so. Like, I don't think he's a killer. I think he's just obsessed yeah. with it, kind of. He just, the thing that bothers me is he just wants to make it as immersive and real as possible. Yeah. I mean, they made plenty of other people weirdos, too, but, like, it's, yeah. it's a bit of a shame that the the gamer and the game programmer, like, the only one in the show is maybe a serial killer. As well. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a shame. Because, you know, gamers have had that stigma with them for a long time of, like, video games cause violence and all these ridiculous things. Yeah. So I hope the show doesn't go that way. Hope so. Angel is the damsel in distress this time. He is. We knew we had to have one. Because yep. It's Dexter. That's yeah. just what this show is, but yeah. I wasn't dead this time. <laughs> I wonder if this sobers up Quinn or if Quinn like loses his job over it kind of thing. I hope both. <laughs> well, I feel like Quinn has had enough chances. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's true. Do you think there's any chance that Angel doesn't make it? I definitely feel like there's a chance. I mean, I'm not really sure there's anywhere for her, anywhere for his character to go necessarily, but I still like having him around. Yeah, he's great. He's one of my favorite characters from the beginning. I mean, ideally, what I would like to see is I would like to see Deb move up and then Angel move up to yeah. her position someday. But I doubt the show will go that long. Maybe it will. Maybe hard, hard to say. Travis recruited a couple. Mm-hmm. Steve and Beth. Yeah. Steve and Beth Dorsey. They're carrying on the work. Um, well, not Steve. Uh, not, not so much Steve. Yeah, Steve got stabbed on the boot. Yeah. So I wonder what Dexter's going to do with Steve. Is he just going to leave him there? He could leave it as... He called the police Travis before... Travis is done with him. Yeah, he called the police before he cleaned up. So I assume that means he's leaving the body. But I guess that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but he, he's got to work fast. I figured yeah. he would have cleaned up and then called the cops if he wasn't leaving it there. Give yourself as much time as you need, not as much time as you have, you know? How do they find that boat? Like, yeah. how do they find the existence of the boat? How do they find the boat? That's... I'm not sure. Unless through, like, the stalking of Holly the whole time, like, he, he already knew about the boat. It's possible. Maybe, like... There was, she said something while she was being tortured or captive. Or I suppose that's possible, but. Maybe before Dexter realized who Travis was going after, like after Holly was released from protective custody, maybe he was tracking her the whole time and just keeping it in the back of his mind, you know, as Geller. Sure. Could I be. don't know. But it was strange that they just, they went right there. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yep, she just got back from the store. She's having a vodka. Deb found out that Matthews was the one with the call girl. Yes. Although, he sent her flowers. So is she a call girl or... I don't know. She's a classy call girl. I guess. Someone that Matthews could afford. You send them flowers? Maybe. I don't know. Helps deepen the realism, I guess. I mean, it's respectful more than just like maybe he's fifty bucks. Suck my dick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's she gonna do? I don't know. She doesn't have Dexter to ask advice of. She doesn't have Angel to ask advice of. I mean, really, like, yeah, I don't know what she's gonna do. Like, Laguerta keeps all that stuff in her pocket to manipulate her, him, and so they sort of have this. Like, they're scratching each other's backs, but... Symbiotic, like, orbit. Yeah, but it, it's all through blackmail of each other, basically. Yeah. Now, I don't think Dev is going to go that 
round. But if she doesn't, then she has two pretty big fights in front of her. Yeah. I mean, the... Like or at it, least the department does. <laughs> at least she has the evidence on her side. Yes. And the evidence is pretty um, undisputable. It's pretty damning. Yeah. I mean, LaGuardia's not tied up in it at all. But it's not, well, it's not good for Matthews. She's not, like, tied in directly unless Deb can prove that she was trying to move the investigation away because of that. But I think that I mean, might be a tough thing to prove. Unless, it, unless Matthews just out of spite wants to take Laguerta down with him. Hey, <laughs> he's he's the spiteful type. That's true. He's deputy commissioner, right? He's, he's up there. He's got a lot of pull. Yeah. To make things go away, to make people go away. <laughs> from at least from their job, if yeah. not from their life. I really like Deb in this episode, where. Like, she's has a weakness where she's struggling with being in the church and it reminding her of all the losses that she's had. But at the same time, when LaGuardia is trying to bully her in the, in the briefing, she's uh-huh. able to stand up and do yeah. that. I'm really digging her character this season. Yes. The further away she gets from Quinn, the more I like it. better her. she gets! <laughs> I know! <laughs> it's like, what's the... Uh... Oh, shoot. You don't know it. Never mind. I can't think of it, and I can't make a reference that you would understand to communicate it to you. That's all right. So cops are on the way. Yep. How are they or Dexter going to figure out that the police station is the one that's going to be bombed? Like, what about Angel? Do they realize, like, when do they realize that he goes missing? Do they post something on the blog about it? Yeah, I... Trying to lure them in, or... I don't know. And I wonder if Travis really believes that everything is ending in four days or not. All of the... Psychoses that he has orbiting him right now. Does it seem I, like on the boat when uh, Steve was bringing up, like, why do we need to worry about that? The world's ending in four days. He, he was more r- resistive, and I wonder if it was... I don't know, I just got the feeling like he was telling him about not getting caught by the cops as, like, an excuse. I don't know. Something about that scene just made me believe he didn't really believe it. Well, we saw before that... Geller was the one who was like, you know, we need to keep this away from the police. But Travis was like, well, you know, more publicity is good, isn't it? And he's like, no, like, we had to finish our work. He killed Geller three years ago? Yeah. Crazy. I know. I would have figured there was more ice buildup in that freezer. You'd think. Humid air down there in Florida? Yeah. It's not sealed? Uh, He's just scraping it, I guess. Yeah. He's... He must be scraping that freezer religiously. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Dexter. You can catch the next one right now over at patreon.com slash blindwave. Full link is there too. Also, be sure to check out twitch.tv slash blindwave. I stream on Tuesday evenings. He streams on Wednesday evenings. Mm-hmm. We're always playing some good stuff. No murder simulators. Nope. Well, I do kind of. <laughs>